Good morning, all. It is Tuesday. I was going to say Friday because that was what was starting to come out of my, my mouth. But it's Tuesday, the 25th, another month ripping by, just like always. Um, sorry, I didn't get you anything on Friday. I was I was in probably one of the most intense, most overwhelming, but one of the greatest experiences of my existence. Um, I've had a lot of great experiences in life, but that is one that had me do some things I'd never considered to change a lot of the thought process that I have. So it's been, it was, it was, it was mind blowing. Um, and one of the, again, one of the greatest things I've ever had the opportunity to do. And I'm praying that whatever the, 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 the work that we put in, the people that were there and myself, it will continue to, to create great results all the way around. So I have full intention to keep doing that. So um, if you haven't, you know, go to the website, aaronchapman.com, scroll down to the donate button, take a look at that, still growing, still doing some awesome things there. I had, I had a great interaction with those guys over Operation Underground Railroad lately, a lot of cool things that they're doing, they've got some amazing stuff coming up, um, and anything we can do to support these guys uh, will help them to continue to do amazing things that you and I can't do. You know, we don't even know where to start. So since we don't know where to start, we do what we do to support those who do so they can do what they do, which is changing the world, especially change the world for, for, for the people that they are, uh, that they have, um, have jumped in and helped. So what we're going to talk a little bit about today, let's just get into some market stuff so I can show you guys what has gone on here. And again, I don't have the capability to really show what's influencing the rates for, for investors. But we do see at least the trends what's going on in those markets. Therefore, it does have an influence somewhat to those aggregators who are, are putting this money forth, even though it's not coming directly for the, from the uh, what we call the UMBS, as you can see right here, Uniform Mortgage Backed Security. Uh, it's coming from a security. It's coming from a mortgage backed security of sorts, but it's not the universal one. It's not the one that Fannie and Freddie are using. So because of that, it's not correlating precisely, but we are seeing some at least stronger demand out there. Now, we've also seen recently a lot of demand kind of freaking out. So we've had to adapt how we get some of these deals done. So some of the things out there that we had readily available to us kind of on pause. So those of you who are doing what they call the burst strategy or those things that are uh, referred to as the... Um, we call it delayed financing. When you're doing that financing, we're finding a harder time to place the deals for a person that's buying the home cash, adding the rehab costs to the uh, to the settlement statement, coming in with the purchase price and the rehab costs, and then refinancing up to 75% once the com it's all completed and getting all their, their cash back, provided appraisers higher. If you want more information about that, let's talk about it. But right now, we're seeing the demand differential that's happening out there with that. Now, six, if a person waits six months, we can still get you 75% cash out, but we're running into some stuff here. So let's definitely talk about it if you have a question about that. The burst strategy of paying cash for the house and adding in the cost, trying to get all the money back for the cash plus the rehab, send me an email, aaron.chapman and sfmc.com. And we'll talk about that or go to aaronchapman.com and, uh, and find us there. So another thing I wanted to kind of get into has to do with, with housing. Of course, we're seeing this, the, um, the, the housing index, um, we've got the Case-Shiller Index, Federal Housing Finance Agency released their home price index, which measures appreciation on single family homes with conforming loan amounts. And we're seeing that um, it's even stronger than the Case-Shiller report, which is interesting. Home prices was 1.4% in March and up 13.9% year over year, which is higher than the 12.3% in the previous report. So what does that mean? You know, this, I, I, there's speculation that the, more, the uh, housing market is a little too hot, right? Driving things way high. It's going to get to the point where we're, we're, pricing, we're pricing a large segment of people out of the market. We also have inflation on the rise with that inflation in, in the, every other place. Everything is on the rise. Don't be mistake that, you know, there's something in the market that's going to drive rate down, rates down. Don't hold out because of that. Everything's on the rise. And when you've got that inflation, if rates have to follow, right? That's how they curb inflation. We talked about that last Tuesday. Well, if that's the case, we've got skyrocketing values of real estate, right? Or prices going up. I can't say values because value is a little bit skewed here. People are paying more than what, what things are worth. And then you got rising interest rates and potentially going to rise again later. What is that going to do, right? It could negatively impact the house values or the market itself, the house prices, Oh, that price of housing is going to influence there. But because of people being squeezed out of it, so they're going to get squeezed out of it because of price right now. Then they're going to get squeezed out of it later because of rate. What's that going to do for rentals, right? And low-income rentals are always going to have a demand. 
So those of you who might be sitting on the fence saying, maybe we're going to wait for things to improve. I don't know that you should be sitting there and thinking about that. If you want to be successful, let me give you the absolute greatest secret to success that I have found. Success is 100% contingent on the ability to collaborate with others. You've got to get other people that have the knowledge that you need in different spots to collaborate with you to come to the end that you're looking for, period. That's where you become successful. Now, how do you collaborate? You've got to build relationships. You've got to have that trust that you have formed between everybody. You have to have really deep-seated deep connection with other people, people that you can connect with that will want to be sure that you're successful. This is not a zero-sum game. Too often, people play this like it is. We've got to negotiate to your benefit. It's not how it works, guys. You do that. You just, so you just completely segmented off people that would have helped you, but because of the way you decide you need to negotiate, you got to be the power man in the deal. You got to be the bull in the, in, the, in the deal. Fine, you may get that one, but I guarantee those people ain't going to do it again. So if you believe that your success is contingent upon your ability to take from those around you, guess what? You win once, but you lose long term. That's how it works. So if you want to be the only man on the field playing against the other team, you want to be the king dangling of everything, there's a good chance you're going to, you will win, you may win one, but then your team's going to walk and you got to do it again. And again, again, what's interesting, you may have to reform teams over and over and over again. You may get one or two deals out of those people, but the cost and the energy to reform teams over and over and over again will cost you way more than what you would have just if you ensured everybody else's success in the deal and you would have won as a result and you would have run repeatedly, repeatedly. So think about that. Collaborate, connect, and ensure that other people are successful. Your success, your success is 100% assured. This comes from a guy who that's how I built my business. 1,557 transactions over the last 12 months for nearly 200 million. And it's truly every thought that I have is how can I help my client? How can I help my team? How can I help my, my referral source? Period. All my energy is poured that way. Everything I did last week was for that. If you think about it, put some energy into it. If you want to talk about it, I'm here for you. I just pray that you get the spirit behind what I'm offering here because that is where success comes. And what's interesting, a business cannot be successful. Success is not a, it's not a real thing. It's a feeling. A business can create that feeling because it's a tool to create it. If you're thinking the business has potential success, you're going to be, you're going to be freaking turning your wheels forever, trying to reach the next goal and the next goal and the next goal. You'll never feel it. The only time I feel it when somebody thanks me that we've, they've accomplished what they wanted to, that's when I feel successful. I feel successful when I see my, my staff reach heights as far as income and things that they didn't think possible. They reach certain goals. My goals are for them. My goals are for you. Appreciate you subscribing. Also run over to quitjerkingoff.com. Subscribe to that YouTube channel, youtube.com slash quit jerking off. Appreciate you guys. We'll see you on Friday because I'm going to be around.